Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a La Nina on the way as we trend deeper into fall and especially for the winter months. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, we are currently in a La Nina watch. And what all that basically means is we're predominantly in an end zone neutral right now, but all indications are we're going to be trending uh, back into a weak La Nina, almost kind of like what we did last year. Uh, we trended towards a weak La Nina back on September the 10th last year. And that's what gave us those well above average uh, hurricane season. And we went back into La Nina and then we went back into an Enzo neutral around the middle of March. We've been in an Enzo neutral, but all indications is we go back into a week La Nina, basically around the, the exact same uh, pattern that we're looking at uh, last year is going to be taking place this year. Because now we have upwards to a 70% chance of this developing as we go deeper into winter through November and through January and all indications that continues deep in the heart of the winter. Here's the latest uh, long range outlook. All models pretty much predominantly are favoring a weak La Nina as we trend towards uh, deeper into the winter months. Here's the green line and your, your minimum criteria is negative 0.5. And look, I mean, we're basically right on the cusp. I mean, we're literally there pretty much right now but that trend line continues not just slightly, but it trends into a weak La Nina and it stays into a weak uh, La Nina all the way through the winter months. And then again, the same thing as we trend towards the spring of 2022, it all indications are favoring that we go back into an Enzo neutral. So it's basically almost the same thing that we, what happened last year. So here's the latest uh, CFS V2 outlook kind of implies the same thing. A little bit more aggressive, they actually take it a little bit deeper uh, into a weak La Nina. But again, all indications are this stays predominantly in a La Nina pattern all the way through the winter months. And then, yeah, a lot of the predictions, even with this model, still indicating going back into an Enzo neutral by the time we get into uh, spring of 2022. Uh, and you can definitely see the trend on these cooler, cooler temperatures out here in the equatorial Pacific as we trend towards uh, deeper into the fall and in the winter months, these darker blues just get a little bit more amplified as the La Nina will start taking uh, shape. So let's take a look at the S uh, Southern Oscillation Index. This is another index that I follow. And basically, we've been on a downward trajectory for the last uh, month or two. You can definitely see in the June, we were right in the middle of that end zone neutral. I mean, basically borderline. We started the transition that we're flipping, going back into a weak La Nina in July when we had a 30-day moving average of 16. It kind of leveled off a little bit in August, but what, we're, we, what we predominantly look at is the overall 90-day moving average, and we're about 7.6, and typically what you have to get to for a weak La Nina is 8 so we're literally right there. So what, is, what does all that mean? Well, basically, there's two jet streams. You got the polar jet, which is well to the north. And then you have your subtropical jet, which is down here in the south. This is indicative of that southern oscillation index. All this basically means is when we were in an oh, oh, uh, oh, Enzo neutral pattern, we saw this amplify. And, and back, in, back in March, and... Texas got out of a drought. All the rain started coming in for the south and the southeast. So it's been very active over the last uh, couple of months. But as we transition out from an Enzo neutral to a La Nina, all this basically means is, is this subtropical jet is not going to be nearly as active as we go deeper uh, into the winter months. And the polar jet will be more active. So it's still there, it's just a little bit more subtle, and it's not gonna be nearly as active as what we've seen. And so here's, take a look at some of the uh, water temperatures uh, currently right now. And this is what the Enzo plays off of, is these water temperatures down here in the Equatorial Pacific, you can definitely see the trend of getting into those darker blues. But notice this warmth 
off here off the coast of the Pacific, that's going to play a role as we go deeper into fall and especially into the winter months. There's a lot of warm water here. And as this polar jet gets more active, it's going to be able to pick up a lot of that and then dump uh, your then that's where indicative of some of your snow events will come from is one of these some of these warmer waters going to be able to pick the pick this uh, moisture up and dump it inland. And that's what we're going to be transitioning to as we go deeper into fall and especially in the winter. And another thing I'm looking at here, that, man, look at the sea surface temperatures right along the East Coast. I mean, why are they getting so much rain? Because these sea surface temperatures are really high. And it doesn't take much for these systems to come across and tap into those well above of average sea surface anomalies here. And that's where we're seeing just the kind of the record type rainfall. You can definitely see the blues here. And that's indicative of some upwelling recently from Grace and as well as Ida. But still, overall, man, these sea surface temperatures going forward are really amped. And that's why I feel you know going into uh, the the heart of hurricane season which we are in now september and october it's really going to be uh, really amped up uh in a big way so here's the setup here's the, the difference between a la nina as well as an el el nino so here's here's the la nina is what we're going into is what we were actually were in uh this time last year into fall and going into the winter months as we saw this southern jet not going to be nearly as active with the more active polar jet taking advantage of this warmth off the coast here lifting it up and dumping some of that colder air i think the rains will eventually start to come back once we transition into that weak la nina back for the pacific northwest overall predominantly you start to see drier conditions for the south and much of the southeast now that doesn't imply you can't get snow because obviously it snowed for a lot of these areas down here into the winter months all that basically means is is overall on average you typically have below average uh, precipitation anomalies it doesn't imply that you can't get snow in that type of atmosphere and you can in a lot of ways snow is doesn't really equate to that much precipitation on a 10 to 1 ratio typically so yeah it's not definitely implying that it's, it's going to be dry that you can't actually see snow for parts of the south and southeast uh and typically in an el nino uh this southern jet stream is a lot more active right it's really amped up you typically have a lot of warmer waters down here in the uh, southern regions and as this come across it typically dumps more rain out here in the west coast and a lot of the southern regions down here in the south and into the southeast so and then your warmer warmer temperatures your polar jet is not not as active but you still you get overall warmer conditions to the north but it still again doesn't imply you're not going to be able to get snow in that type of atmosphere but the odds of us going into a, a an el nino this year are literally less than 10%. That's not gonna happen, all right? We are predominantly gonna be in an Enzo neutral transitioning to a weak La Nina. And I don't really see uh, the weak La Nina going into a moderate or even a strong. I think it stays right there along being a weak La Nina uh, criteria. But yeah, what happened last year? So yes, we were basically classified into a week uh la nina back on september the 10th right at the peak of hurricane season this is september 3rd when i'm doing this video and we're literally right on the cusp of another week la nina and what all that means is again we're, we're going into the highly fav favorable time frame and as soon as we switch to a week la nina that just again you know up the standards lower the shear in the atlantic and, and amplify these systems to have that record month I'm not implying that we're going to get 30 storms, but I do imply that we're going to be in an active time for the rest of the year, at, especially when that weak La Nina uh, starts to kick in. So we still have the peak of hurricane season left. We're at 12 storms now, and we still got all of September and all of October, which again, I do feel October is going to be a very busy month again, and then we'll transition uh you know slowly start to die down but man hurricane season goes until november 30th so we're still another three more months so we're gonna have to be dealing with hurricane season here's some of the september anomalies uh going forward that the climate prediction center put out 
again it has a lot of the west coast regions still in that end zone neutral so we still have those below uh you know above average temperatures that we've been seeing for predominantly i do feel over time especially as we transition to the second half of september we're start we're going to be starting to see some of those cooler conditions even some colder conditions it's going to be really amped up down here in the south and southeast where i think yes the monsoon will slowly die down over time but we still have several more weeks for the monsoon typically on average but down here in the south and southeast where they've been getting a lot of rain i still feel again we're going to the heart of hurricane season this is going to be a favored track as we move forward uh into september for for the rest of the month but take a look to the north because we're already starting to see some some transition you know well to the north this is of course the beginning of september you know actual fall doesn't even start till september 22nd this is right now meteor what they call meteorologically fall but it's technically still summer. We're still hot in a lot of places, but well to the north, we're starting to see a huge swing in the upper atmosphere where Siberia had, you know, pretty much, they had pretty much record record heat uh, this year, but we're seeing a massive flip in the setup. We're starting to see much colder anomalies in our back in the picture. Not only that, but a great snowpack that's gonna be laying down for the next week or two. And typically, once, if you get an early snowpack like that, a uh, well to the north in Siberia and some of those northern well, well to the north, typically that that lays the groundwork for the, an early early start to fall and an early start to winter. Because as these cold fronts come down, it'll be less less likely for the temperatures to modify in this atmosphere. So if you want to see a, an early transition to you know fall or especially into the winter this is a good sign that you're seeing some of these you know really uh, the snow anomalies well to the north and you can see the trend here as we go into that second and third week of september a lot of that snow transitions down here into alaska and well to the northern parts of uh, canada and again once we lay a groundwork in that snow and with those above average sea, uh, sea surface anomalies well off the coast here with that jet amplifying and digging down yes we we are definitely starting to see the initial setup of a much colder conditions uh entering into uh, idaho and montana going into wyoming and in our northern states as that polar jet will start to get a little bit more after that as we transition into some of that uh you know weak la nina type criteria and yeah we could be looking at even some of our first snowfall by the time we get into that second week that second half of september with again we have the siberian snow setting up battle transition into alaska and our northern states into uh, northern areas into canada but then again as that polar jet will get a little bit more active some of that snow will transition down here, here into Montana and to Wyoming. And so we're talking to that September 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th timeframe. So that'll be probably one of our first initial snows of the season. It's not that really out, out, out of the ordinary to see that in the second or third week of September, but we are seeing the beginning stages of a transition to a little bit more colder pattern especially well to the north i just think that's going to amplify especially as we go into uh the winter months so here's the the anomalies on the latest uh, cfs model for october and yes i do feel the ridge will be predominantly in place for much of southeast canada that's why i feel like the, the we've been talking about this for hurricane season that creates the blocking setup. That's what transitions with the Bermuda High at the bridge over the north, south, southeast Canada will continue to steer a lot of storms. What we've seen most of hurricane season so far, I just feel like that locks in place again into October as well, as most of the cold will be starting to transition into uh, the western states and funnel down into the central uh us as we go through that october time frame but the levels start breaking down so as we go into that november time frame we we start to we start to see the ridge start to break down we're coming out 
of the peak of hurricane season by then. And I think a lot of that cold air that's laying the groundwork in Siberia and well to the north right now will finally start feeling the effects by the time we get into that November time frame with some much opportunities for colder shots to enter back enter to the United States. And I feel as, as we go into t- December, We'll be locked in place into uh, a week La Nina, and I feel like December is going to be one of these years this year that's going to be a lot colder than what we've seen as of late. We've seen a much colder July for a lot of regions, and I feel that's going to set the tone for uh, December. And so that's my early outlook, I think, right now, as I'm I'm looking at a much colder uh, December than what we've seen in the past in, the, in a lot of the years that we've seen of, as of late. So let's take a look at some of the the precipitation anomalies for the last basically six months. I mean, since we've been into an Enzo neutral, and I, and I don't need to tell you, this has been well to the well, uh, much above average uh, precipitation anomalies for the south and the southeast. That was an indicative of that Enzo neutral that we predominantly be going to be in. And even if we transition out into a weak La Nina, we're still going to see these well above average anomalies going forward because I think the amped up atmosphere of the hurricane season is going to continue to remain these above average. But man, some of these totals are upwards to 20, some of these 42 inches above average, which which you would typically see over that last six months. So some of these areas, I mean, we've already seen isolated locations upwards to a hundred inches of rainfall down here and we still got another three more months you know left four more months into uh you know for the rest of the year but what i've got going forward is this ridge that should be dominating over southeast canada put all the parameters in here and yes i do feel it'll slow down at times but for the most part that's going to be locked in place for the sep- less to September going through October. That's going to set the, the tone for hurricane season to be, have these storms more likely to get closer to the coast or if not make landfall. We've already had six of them so far this year. So it's been a very active setup for U.S. landfalls. And I do feel that will continue for the rest of hurricane season. So going forward, again, some of these seasonal precipitation anomalies uh, for the rest of September and October has those well above average anomalies along the coast, implying that these storms get close. It's going to dump a lot of rain into our south and southeast and our east coast regions. And then once we transition back into a weak La Nina, going into deeper into September and especially into October, I do feel the rains are going to be starting to come back into the Pacific Northwest and Northern uh, California regions. Unfortunately, that's not going to help Central and Southern California at all uh, with a weak La Nina coming back into play. So I do feel these can these areas will the monsoon will be dying out by then, and these you'll continue uh, to remain dry predominantly for a good chunk of California. And Nevada, unfortunately, as we make that transition into a, a weak La Nina. So, hey, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.